Joining us now is the Tasmanian Senator Richard Colback. He's also the Parliamentary Secretary for Agriculture. Richard Colback, good morning. Thank you very much for your time. Morning, Michael. Do you agree with the Prime Minister that we have quite enough national parks in Australia? Well, I, th I agree with the Prime Minister that we have a good balance of national parks and protected areas in Australia, uh, and that's appropriate. But uh, it, it is about having a balance, and uh, if you lock too much up, you actually start to have a negative impact on your regional communities, and there's plenty of evidence to demonstrate that that's the case. The Prime Minister, though, and you were there, I assume, at this speech, did not use the words good balance. He said quite enough national parks. Do you agree there are quite enough national parks? Yes, I do. OK. So we take that argument to its next step. Would you support uh, the closure of some of those parks and uh, the uh, access to uh, timber operations of some of those forests? Well, in Tasmania, as you would be aware at the moment, we're in a process where we're requesting the World Heritage Commission to repeal a section of the recent listing that was put through by the la previous Labor Green government. Uh, a lot of that area should never have been put into uh, the, the World Heritage area in the first place, it didn't qualify under anyone's classification of an outstanding wilderness world heritage area. It's previously been logged. There's thousands of hectares that have been previously been used for timber production. They should remain in timber production and remain uh, in ac with access to the forest industry uh, and so that our regional communities can get the benefit of, it, of those areas. But also, um, we know that our forest practices are among the best in the world, demonstrated by the fact that green groups want to lock up previously harvested forest as, as, as wilderness. Uh, so let's acknowledge the quality of our forest management, uh, have the appropriate areas protected, uh, and, and I know that's what the Prime Minister believes in, uh, and get a benefit for the community, for the environment uh, and, for our, and for our local industries out of the remainder. Looking at that 74,000 hectares, uh, we have experts though, including Peter Hitchcock, who advised on last year's Tasmanian World Heritage Extensions. He argues that 90% of that 74,000 hectares is undisturbed forests. Well, I don't agree with him. I've actually flown over it and had a good look at it myself. In fact, I think he had a different view when he reported in 2008. So. Um, uh, so there are no, it, it uh, no, no, no old growth forests. We're, we're, not, we're not seeing any old growth. Excuse me for interrupting. Uh, no, no old growth forests at all in this 74,000 hectares. Well, there may be some remnant old growth forests as part of it, which there are as part of any forest operations, because you don't go through and clear streamside reserves, for example, under our forest management practices. So there may be some remnant areas of old growth, um, and those uh, areas will most likely remain protected uh, as part of our forest management in, in any circumstance. Uh, and uh, there are also some additional protections under our Forest uh, Practices Code with respect to areas that need to remain uh, outside of harvest areas. So um, there, there may be some uh, old growth, uh, but you, you have to be very careful around the terminology that's used around old growth. There is a technical terminology that's used by the, uh, the forest uh, science sector, but there is also a terminology used by the green groups, which is very different, and, and they regard 40-year-old uh, regrowth, for example, as, as old growth forests. So be careful of the terminology. OK. Now, uh, as a Tasmanian, Richard Colbeck, you well know of the incendiary nature of the forestry debate. And I do note that the Tasmanian forestry industry is opposing the government's move to delist that 74,000 hectares. They argue that it would upset that uh, finely balanced recent forest agreement. So if, if they're not on board, why is the government pressing ahead? Well, as I said, it should never have been listed in the first place. We never supported this forest deal, which is a, a Labor Green construct. Uh, it should never have gone ahead. Uh, the forests aren't the forest industries to give away, and they're not the environment groups to claim. They belong to the broader community. But I'm talking about the timber industry who have access to these forests. Just they... to the forest industry and the environment group, and the rest of the Tasmanian yeah. community didn't get a say. But the timber industry, who uh, uh, logically would get access to this forest if they were delisted, say they don't want to be part of the deal. Well, uh, the government won uh, three seats in Tasmania at the last election on the back of this policy. We won a 13.7% swing in the seat of Lyons, defeating a really strong supporter of the forest industry in Dick Adams in uh, the last election. Uh, I believe that we have a very strong mandate from the Tasmanian community in particular for our forest policy, and I think you'll see that reflected in Tasmania at the state election in a few days' time. OK, but do you find it a very least embarrassing that you don't have the timber industry on side as you press ahead with this uh, move to get those 74,000 hectares delisted? I'm not embarrassed at all. The timber industry know my policy, they know the government's policy very well. Uh, I think the, at the dinner last night there was a very, very strong show of support for 
uh, this government's forest policy. The Great Hall of the Parliament was full last night. There were 600 people there. Uh, they mobbed the Prime Minister after his speech last night. Uh, I think that uh, the timber industry are very much on side with the government. Uh, and they know our position very well in respect to the forests in Tasmania. And just finally, very quickly, we're just about out of time. Uh, uh, do you share the timber industry's worry that if uh, this move goes ahead, it will smash that forest peace deal? Well, we never supported the peace deal in the first place. We've said from very, the very first day of negotiations that this is a bad deal, that it would hurt the industry. It doesn't provide sustainable supply for the timber, timber industry in the future. What it does is kill the industry by 2030. There's no timber left for a sustainable forest industry by 2030 under this peace deal. Under our policy, you'll have a sustainable industry for 100 years and beyond, and that's what I call a sustainable forest industry, not, the one, not one that's going to die in 15 years. Okay, Richard Colbeck, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Michael.